Hello and welcome to Millennial Media. On this show, we talk to students and their instructors from St. Charles County Area Schools about some of the interesting projects they create. On today's show, we'll be talking to an art teacher and some of his students from Daniel Boone Elementary. To start our show today, I have third grader Noah and his teacher, Tom Sherman. How are you guys doing today? Good. Great. Good. All right, so you are Mr. Sherman's student, Noah, right? Mm -hmm. You guys do a lot of cool things in art. Uh, first of all, we got this on the desk here. Can you tell me a little bit about this project? Um, it's our little city, New Melly. It's where I live in. And the house is made out of cardboard with paper on top. Okay. And then... This right here, you can't see it, is uh, the water tower. Oh, I see that now. Okay, that makes sense. How'd you make the fence? Um, well, he helped me by spray painting it, um, like shiny gray. I like it. That's very nice. Mr. Sherman, tell us a little bit about this project. Uh, so this is part of the third grade new curriculum that is uh, aligned with national standards. And uh, when I saw the curriculum, I was a little bit nervous about it. It seemed like a lot of it was really open-ended. Somebody asked me at open house, like, what is third grade going to do this year in art? What are they going to make? And I, I looked at this parent and I was like, I have no idea. Right. So um, the lesson started with just this question about like how students want to create these maps. And I, I left it really open-ended. They were allowed to pick their media. All like I really required was that they keep sketches of their plans. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so Noah is very involved in his community and very involved in sports. And I thought that this was a really great example of uh, showing his community and what he cares most about through his artwork. I gotcha. So I guess the art curriculum has changed a little bit since I was Noah's age. Our stuff, I think the most, the closest project we did to something like that was we had to sketch our room. But I don't think we ever did anything 3D, so that's definitely very cool. So Noah, this is, I heard your mom say, I think a baseball clubhouse, you said? Yeah, this mm -hmm. is uh, where we play baseball. Okay, well, that's I cool. So you're an athlete, you like baseball? Mm hmm Yeah, how long have you been playing? About four years. Four years, wow, okay. You've been playing quite some time then. All right, so tell us about some of the other projects that you do, Noah. I know we have a picture of, I think it's a chameleon you drew? Yeah. That's pretty cool, tell us about that. Um, so we were learning a little about um, chameleons and I just wrote a tree branch with a chameleon on it and some leaves and a spider on the leaf. And then the chameleon has a lot of colors I made with them. I like it. It's very cool. You definitely used a lot of colors. It's, it's not a, a questionable piece at all. You can look at it right away and tell. So you're a pretty talented artist, if I do say so myself. Uh, is art one of your favorite subjects in school? Mm -hmm. you enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. I remember when I was a kid, art was probably my favorite class, art and music. I liked the stuff that was more hands-on, you know. Okay, that's very cool. So, Mr. Sherman, um, can you tell us what this project was about? Um, so, I was, uh, this was from when Noah was in second grade. We were talking about different cultures and the way that masks show up in all of these different cultures. So, I was able to uh, help the students and guide them through uh, paper and cutting and gluing techniques and especially how to use symmetry and how to try to get the symmetry in the artwork by folding paper and different tricks like that. Okay. So Noah, how, how long would you say that project took you? Was it a lot having to cut out all the stuff? And yeah, I cut out took about two days. Yeah. Of art. How did you pick the colors? Was it just whatever colors the students yeah, wanted Yeah, I just to got whatever colors. I like it. I like it. Is blue your favorite color? I noticed you picked that for the biggest part. Is yeah. That the yeah. Okay. So what are some of the other projects that you've had the kids working on since you mentioned that a lot of this stuff is a new curriculum? Um, so whenever there's a project like this that has a lot of choice involved in it, then I, I kind of need to back up with them after it and try to start embedding some skills. So 
the project following this one was not as open-ended. It was, it was uh, more practicing skills and less freedom to make your own choices. But we have, we've been involving sketchbooks a lot lately into the things that they create. I think that the sketchbook helps them to uh, be involved in a design process from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. It helps them to make a lot more mistakes through their work, and then they can uh, they can reflect on the mistakes that they made, and hopefully then those skills that they get from doing an art project, they keep those skills and can apply them in a lot more different ways as they move forward and have more opportunities to have more choice. Okay. Well, I appreciate you coming today, Noah. That's really cool. Uh, hopefully, mm -hmm. maybe one day you can come back and we can see some of the stuff you worked on as you get a little bit older. Tom, I'm going to have you sit tight. Uh, we're going to bring Audrey up next. So thank you again, Noah. You did a great job. Right after this, we'll be right back with fifth grader Audrey. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I had something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back. Joining us now is fifth grader Audrey. Audrey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for joining us. So, first and foremost, I want to start with the solar eclipse. I know that that was a pretty big deal in many local schools because none of us had ever seen something like that before, and I know a lot of schools made big projects out of it or even went outside and watched it. Um, did you guys do anything in art class? Um, we made a solar eclipse wheel with all the colors of the color wheel. We took paintbrushes and splattered it onto a paper. And then in the middle was just a dark circle. Mm -hmm. So it looked like the solar eclipse, and then there was the color wheel around it. I like it. That's very nice. So, Mr. Sherman, what made you come up with that concept? Um, I knew that it was important for the fifth graders to understand how the color wheel worked and that it is a tool that you can use when you're using paint or, or color in general. Um, so it's an important tool, but I, I've had really boring color wheel projects in the right. past, even as a student as well, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to make this one fun. So uh, splattering paint, they love to do it. Art teachers don't like it. Yeah. but. <laughs> Uh, it was fun for them, and uh, it, it made something that looked really cool, and we had a blast doing it, and hopefully they learned a little bit from it. Yeah, it was definitely it definitely looks very cool. It's more interesting than any color wheel assignment I did when I was younger, so kudos to you guys for doing that. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the pieces you brought with you today, Audrey? I see the tree. That's really nice. It's um, nice and colorful. So the tree with, we got to go out and sketch with our whole class. We got sketchbooks and went out there and sat in the parking lot and started sketching trees. We could pick any tree we wanted and then we used that as like our research and came back in and we got to sketch on a piece of watercolor paper. Mm -hmm. And then what we did was we just took our paintbrush and picked some colors and then we just dotted all over our paper to make the leaves. And then for the ground, I did just paintbrush strokes of the same colors as the leaves like falling off. I like it, you used a lot of colors, it's very pretty. I, uh, we had a finger painting project as part of a club on campus. We just had a day where we decided to do finger painting and I did something similar to that. So it's definitely my favorite that you brought today. Speaking of dots, I know you guys had a dot project, right? There was a book involved. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, that was, uh, there's International Dot Day and it's about um, a book called The Dot by Peter H. Reynolds. Mm -hmm. And there are schools all over the world that are celebrating this book on this particular day in September. Um, the main theme of the book is that everyone should make their mark and see where it takes you. Um, I start my program 
in kindergarten, the very first thing that they do is create a painting of a dot or a squiggle or, or whatever it is that they come up with. But the idea is based off of that book, that everybody is an artist and everybody can make their mark and make something valuable. So on dot day, I, I had even the older kids reflect on, on that idea. And uh, as many people as we could, including even teachers, I, I left some supplies in the teacher's lounge. And so I tried to get as many people involved in making their mark as I could on that day. It's great. And you mentioned that that project took a, it set a little better with your fifth graders, right? Actually, yeah, because I think it's been a long time since I took out, you know, a book at a kindergarten reading level and, and right. read it to them. So uh, I think that was kind of refreshing for them. Um, and and a little bit exciting for them. That's cool. So I assume you like that project then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this one. What's this? Um, this was our forms project. Okay. So everyone in that art room is in groups, and then we turn off all the lights, and we opened up the blinds and let the light come in onto the forms that we had set out on our table, and then we took charcoal, and we took chalk and we made we had to do the shading and the highlighting and everybody's was different because everyone was in a different spot spot and seeing different shadows and highlights that's very nice uh, we did a project similar to that before that's that's very good for an elementary school you know i don't mean to say it like you're not talented because you're in elementary school but that's actually very good i am maybe you're just a good teacher mr sherman you're bringing out the best in these young artists I have really, really excellent students, and they give me everything that they've got. They, they try their hardest, even when it's in black and white and that seems kind of boring. Mm -hmm. I think that they understand that everything that I give them to do is a challenge, uh, that is, it, nothing is going to come easy, and, and there's always extensions that you can make uh, and ways that you can improve yourself. Well, thank you very much, Audrey. You did a great job today. Thanks for coming. And Tommy, you can still sit tight. Coming up next, we're going to talk a little bit just with Mr. Sherman about some of the exciting things that he's involved in. So stay tuned. I dare you. I dare you to change the world. Yeah, you. Getting that college education. I dare you to be somebody important. Like be a teacher. Or a reality TV star. I dare you to stand up here. To call the shots. To be a role model. An inspiration. An innovator. To be a teacher. Think you can change my life? Make me excited about science like you? Have a career that really means something? Then do it. I dare you. It's me, Artie. Come see what I collected from the Creative Galaxy in my idea box. Transform your world. Will you help me make art? Each one of our journeys keeps us young. Before you throw it away. Hey, I have an idea. Think outside the box. We'll never get older. Each one Go of our journeys keeps us Go be amazing! Us Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Welcome back. Now I have just Tom here with me to talk about his work with Daniel Boone's elementary art program. So Tom, last but not least, it is your turn. Um, we talked a little bit about something that you had going on, the Inktober. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? So Inktober is a drawing challenge that is put on by Jake Parker, and he's an illustrator and an amazing YouTuber. He has the, some really cool videos that, that have great ideas about uh, the creative process. And uh, this drawing challenge lasts for all 31 days of October, mm -hmm. and each day has a one-word prompt. And so um, I think at the beginning of this school year, I started looking at this challenge and, and thinking, maybe I can do this, and what's a great way to force myself to do this? Mm -hmm. And so I tried to get as many people involved as I could, so I asked students to do it and other teachers. Uh, two other teachers in my building took the bait and bought sketchbooks and pens and got ready for it. And uh, what was cool was I, I started doing it and, and I, I was watching my teacher friends on social media post, post their uh, drawings for Inktober. And I had no expectation that any of my students really were. Mm -hmm. And I was out writing curriculum for a few days and then came back after fall break and a whole bunch of kids came in with sketchbooks and had 
done all of these Inktober prompts. Uh, meanwhile, um, every night after my kids would go to sleep and my wife would be in bed, I would be getting out of bed to spend a couple hours on these drawings. Um, and I stuck to it and it was exhausting. It was kind of like running a creative marathon or a, mm -hmm. a drawing marathon. Um, I don't know if I want to do it again. <laughs> But, and I feel really bad for the people that, that I was like, you should start Inktober. Now, now they're exhausted and they're like, oh, I'm glad I did it. But um, I'll probably do it again next year, but, uh, but I might approach it differently and make it a little bit easier on myself. I chose to have each prompt lead into the next and created a story gotcha. about an astronaut that's lost. Um, so... It uh, it took a lot of wow. a lot of problem solving and a lot of pens. Mm -hmm. I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, maybe maybe next year I'll, I'll use less black. Uh, that took some time. Um, to do all thirty-one drawings was was a, a, a pretty big challenge. You are surely very talented. I definitely like the fact that you tried to find some cohesive way to bring all 31 days together that's definitely very cool and I'm, I'm a little jealous I think I'm decent at drawing but man you've got something special well and I think the the story that ended up coming out uh, with with my drawings my daughter who's three and a half appreciates this relationship between the astronaut and this dragon alien uh, and what happens with them but there are there are bigger parts to the plot that mm -hmm. that if you uh, read through the images um, and and really break them apart, uh, there there's a bigger story there, um, and and I think that that's really what's cool about it. Somebody asked me if I would write words to go along with these images, and I think I think not. I think it's just a uh, a visual story. Okay. So it definitely probably speaks for itself then. As, as much detail as there is in having 31 different images to work with, you probably don't really need much narration for it. Uh, I guess a picture is worth a thousand words. So It's a very artsy teacher right. response. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I definitely like that. That was very interesting. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the video club? I know you mentioned that prior to the show. Okay, so I've been doing video club for, I think, think eight years now and what I do is I work with uh, a, a group of fifth grade students and it rotates throughout the year because I, I want to invite everybody to be able to do it um, and I try to encourage students to write their own reports mm -hmm. and if you write then you present your work uh, and for the most part there's usually kind of uh, competition people want to be an anchor mm -hmm. uh, and want to be in front of the camera um, so so it's really easy to motivate kids to create nonfiction writing that then they can share with the community and it also highlights a lot of the things that are happening in my school that I that I want to share with with the community I think that video is a great way to um, to to make people see what you think is most important right. and to highlight those things. Mm -hmm. And I think the video club is something that can definitely have a big impact on kids because I know we had something similar when I was in elementary and part of that led to me doing other things along my primary education years that ended up resulting in me doing this. So I definitely think that that is a huge thing to do with kids and I commend you for sticking to that. Uh, what got you interested in doing that? Um, I went to McClure North High School and uh, Kevin Hampton was um, an inspiration and uh, a, a mentor, a friend and uh, a great teacher and he started the video production class while I was there. Um, I helped even back in high school, I remember when I, when I signed up for this class we, we had saws and drywall and, and built part of that television studio and the the green screen that was there uh, mm -hmm. I even think I helped run like old school cable wire through the building um, and I was I got to be the first uh, the first person on the McClure North news program 
Um, and so when I started teaching at Daniel Boone, I looked at the resources that we had, and and it wasn't there. It wasn't much. Right. Um, but I knew that there was a way to. I had Windows Movie Maker mm -hmm. on my computer, and it was a desktop computer, and we had a shared drive, so I knew I could share the file. Uh, at that time, the teachers needed to drag the file to their desktop and wait for it to right. download to their desktop um, because there was not enough bandwidth to even support a really, really terrible uh, video file. Mm -hmm. um, but we've, we've come a long way, although I think... I think my budget is still like one broken battery and three pieces of felt. <laughs> uh, I think that's about it. So um, it really was like uh, being inspired by a teacher that I had and problem solving. Well, I guess I owe you a thank you. For those of you watching that don't know, I went to Mill Corner North also, and Kevin Hampton was somebody that I met back in elementary school and continue to kind of keep up with over the years and I had the Star News as a class in high school so thank you for helping build that studio I'm sure probably without that experience I wouldn't have wanted to get into broadcast in the first place so special thanks to you uh, I definitely commend you for sure for having so little to work with because that's a hard startup process with an elementary school and not having very many resources, trying to get something like that together can be hard, especially like with the technology that you mentioned. So definitely keep it up if you can. I know you mentioned that you're a little busy. So if you can keep it up or try to be that behind the scenes force that keeps that running, because that can definitely have a big impact, I think, on a lot of kids. Thanks. So I appreciate you sticking to that. Uh, another thing that we talked about is the artist that you're supposed to do a video chat with. Yeah, so also when I was at McClure North, there was uh, an upperclassman named Dylan Mortimer, and um, he, would, he, he, he would be creating this amazing artwork. And uh, he always encouraged me, even though my stuff was terrible compared to his, so he, he was always encouraging me. And I didn't know a whole lot about him because I think I didn't know a whole lot about CF or cystic fibrosis, mm -hmm. um, and I've watched him. I watched. I've watched his artwork develop, uh, and now he is a sculptor that lives in Kansas City, and he has these amazing pieces that that show his struggle mm -hmm. with uh, his lungs and breathing, and um, and and I think that it's a really cool way to. To, to see that there, there, is, there is this struggle with his life that comes out in his work in a really beautiful way. So I'm really excited to share his ideas mm -hmm. and his personality with my, with my students. Right. So is this just something you wanted to do as a, was it kind of like a personal favor, like you reached out to him or? Um, for me, it's, it's him doing it as a personal favor for mm -hmm. me, but uh, I think that when I look at his work, you know, you see the Air Jordans yeah. and the connection from the Air Jordans to lungs. It's uh, the idea of like him needing more air. And I see like, that now. Okay. When, you, when you are in basketball coveting the idea of more air, mm -hmm. the way that he's coveting the idea of more air in his lungs. Like uh, that connection to such a like pop culture idea through his artwork that we all can appreciate because at maybe at some time or another, most of us have probably looked at a pair of Jordans and been like, those would be pretty sweet to have. Right. Um, but his, uh, the things that he values are different than most people. Mm -hmm. um, I think that this, la this past year, he, he got his lung transplant. Okay. And that was a huge deal. Um, so every breath that he takes is uh, something that he values mm -hmm. the way that the rest of us are walking around thinking about Jordans. He's walking around appreciating right. each step he takes. Right. And if we can get this uh, graphic full screen, I see that now the more that we're talking about it. That tree looks like lungs now. Yes. I see that. And that's... That's actually very impressive. When I originally looked over these before the show, I didn't even notice it. 
and now sitting here talking about it, that is actually amazing to think well, of that concept. And I've still got questions for him. Like mm -hmm. as an art teacher, I'm looking at his work like, but why glitter? Right. Why did you have to use right. glitter? <laughs> you know? That is very interesting. Well, for anybody interested, if we can get that back up on full screen again, there is a link where you can go see more of Dylan's sculptures. Uh, and I look forward to maybe keeping in contact with you to hear about how that interview goes. I definitely keep me in the loop on that. That's Absolutely. definitely very interesting. Um, and just, I know we kind of skipped over that a couple of minutes ago, but we only looked at a couple of your Inktober sketches. Could you show us a couple more? You have 31 to work with. I have with, so. 31 and um so it is, there, there are some twists in this story. Um, I think that one that I was excited about, there, so throughout the, um, throughout the story, this astronaut is exploring this really desolate wasteland mm -hmm. of a planet. And they think that they are lost on a different planet. Um, but you find out through different clues that the astronaut sees that 500 years have passed and that's kind of a mysterious thing. And if you don't um, mind, could you hold that up? A yeah, bit just so, and then here is where the astronaut gets to, gets to leave on a spaceship um, and kind of gets beamed up by the spaceship. But then when they get on the spaceship, they see the screen and they realize that, they're, that the spaceship that they're on is leaving Earth. So then they realize that they've been on Earth the whole time. Um, and then they decide that rather going to the destination that is scheduled for the spaceship, that they'll just climb out of the spaceship and, uh, and they jump back for Earth. So um, this is, I think, the important part of the plot of the story is that uh, I wanted to show that, the, that our planet is something that, it's a gift that we've been given mm -hmm. and uh, it shouldn't be wasted and that we're not, as a species, like we're not going to find another planet to go to. This is the one that we have and this is the one that we need to value. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the one that we should be stuck with and we should realize that and appreciate it. Um, at the end, so today I showed the very last page and I made the astronaut a girl, and today I got a reaction for that. Uh, and I don't know that I wanted a reaction mm -hmm. for it, but, but then when the, the reaction happened, I was like, okay, well, then that needed to happen. Because I think uh, as I would show my students my drawings throughout the month of October, it was always, oh, he, he's doing this, mm -hmm. he's doing that, he's doing this. And in my head, I was sitting there thinking, well, he's a she like right. the whole time uh it wasn't supposed to be a a big twist mm -hmm. but um okay it i think was. It, yeah i think it just naturally happens because for whatever reason that thought in our mind we always see something and when the subject doesn't show their face we just naturally assume it's a he so although to you it's just something subtle like yeah whatever it was a girl that's a big plot twist i guess if you're looking through all of this for the first time um that is definitely very cool that you were able to bring out that much from just those simple lists of words. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. And I also greatly appreciate you coming today, Tom. It was great having you as well as Noah and Audrey. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and thank you for your patience too, sitting here through all three segments. That's all that we have for today's show. Again, a special thanks to Noah and Audrey and Tom. If you would like to see more, you can head on over to Facebook and you can find them under the Daniel Boone art page. Tom, thank you for all your time. And again, thank you to the children. We appreciate all that you showed us today. And that is all for today's show. Keep an eye out for our next episode in a couple of weeks.